Last time on Rockin' the Oldies. I highly doubt there's an alien in here, but the only thing I can try to do is stun this civilian. I think I'm gonna lose points for that, but the only chance is that the guy is right there. Oh, shitty. Are you gonna die, dude? <laughs> I hope not. Oh, uh, Chippy, my friend, how you we missed. Greetings and salutations to the denizens of the Cyber Dog Nation and all the peoples of YouTube and the interwebs. This is Ivan Dogovich rocking the oldies with the 23rd episode of Let's Play Retro XCOM Terror from the Deep. Welcome back, my friends, after a harrowing mission at night in Fiji, killing Gilman and Deep One. Right at the end of the month, to the beginning of the month, we are back at Rendog Prime. And I've got to say, this isn't exactly what I expected. And I'll tell you why. I didn't expect to end up doing what I'm doing right now. You see, what happened is I recorded a bunch of episodes. Um, I recorded episodes 23 through 26. And got towards editing them tonight and oh my gosh what I found was that I had the most annoying little mouse double click sound turned on that was just making the most repulsive noise um, all of my voice track was completely unusable so my plan is to actually um, record a voiceover of episode 23 which is what I've got right now here at Rendog Prime, looking over base management, some of the things I did, um, and to see how this goes. I've never done a voiceover, kind of commentating on the action after it's happened. Um, what happens is, though, um, we'll, we'll get into this, but I do talk a little bit about what we're doing here, um, some planning with the base, um, and we'll see how this goes. What I, I want to do um, is work through the end of this episode with a voiceover and then pick up and re-record um, episodes 24 and on. So current research we're looking at right now making good product progress on aquaplastics which is good. Um, this will allow us to do some more down the road for some important stuff to keep our soldiers alive. Looking forward to that. Um, we do have two million bucks, so right now, checking the space, we've only got enough room for three more people. Living quarters is 100, and we've got it uh, a bunch of scientists, 70 of those guys, some technicians, about 20 aquanauts, and what we're going to need is more scientists. We need to get a number of about 100 scientists up, so we need to build, we do have a, a living quarters being built, that one right there. So that's going to give us another 50, um, so that would give us 30 scientists, and then maybe another, um, that leaves us a space for 20, so maybe some more technicians, and the Aquanauts are probably good at 20. Um, I went ahead and ordered a few more technicians there. Um, manufacturing med kits right now had a few um, technicians that were not completely at work. We'll go ahead and put those guys to work. The med kits we'll use, and then we'll also be able to resell. Oh, so yeah, it's uh, going good. What we're also going to do is um, set up our bases so that uh, Burgo, Burgo, Maine, um, which is right over here in the Indian Ocean, that will become our primary manufacturing facility. We'll do some manufacturing at Rendog Prime, our first base, but we will set up and. Um, get Burgo Maine set up and I did want to mention well let's talk about the uh, research here first so the aqua plastics are complete it's the stuff of uh, alien subs and structures the stuff they make a bunch of their stuff out of and it's complex multi-bonded with zerbite catalyst materials dense yet light stronger than titanium or Kevlar which is good stuff um, and it gives us the ability to research plastic aqua armor. Let's get that research going on. Get all, all the things on it. Get all of the scientists on this because this is going to make our troops a little more survivable. It's the reason why we wanted that Deep One Corpse on our uh, first terror mission because it allowed us to research aqua plastics and plastic aqua armor. 
The progress is excellent, which is going to go fast. That's good. Um, so that is good stuff. We'll let those guys crank on that. We don't really need to ever manufacture aquaplastics. We should be able to capture enough from down subs and other things to keep that going. Um, but I was going to say, Burgo, um, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I'm, I'm naming my bases after YouTubers. Rendog is one of my primary inspirations, which is Rendog Prime, but Burgo, Maine is named after one of my great friends, um, Burgo, who has his own YouTube channel. He's a, an amazing YouTuber. He's got a couple different XCOM uh, LP series that he's done. He's doing XCOM Enemy Within right now, and it's outstanding. You need to check it out. Wow. So we just blasted through Aquaplastics Armor Research. The armor utilizes newly discovered alien substance, aquaplastic, and ensures our aquanauts are given a fighting chance against the alien scum. Front armor 60, which is decent. Left, right, rear armor 35, 30, lower armor 25. Um, it may keep the guys from dying uh, directly, but the heavier sonic weapons will definitely still one-shot them. But it should give them some more survivability, um, and it's a first step to being truly survivable against the enemy um, weaponry. So yeah, Burgo is a is a good friend of mine, and um, I'm naming the bases after different uh, YouTube colleagues, YouTube um, friends that uh, I admire, especially ones that are doing uh, different uh, XCOM series. Okay, um, so here I'm looking at what to research next. There's you know, the Sonic Cannon is an amazing weapon, and it's got such power. Um, it's kind of the choice to do that, or actually start on the track to go towards some heavier armor, which is a little longer time frame. So, it's kind of a, a, a toss-up here. Um, and the Deep One Terrorist is the live Deep One that we captured in Fiji, and he will help unlock some of that. Um, but yeah, I think that it's what we're going to do is just go with the Sonic Cannon. The Sonic Cannon is so powerful, it'll allow us to deal with some of the more powerful enemies down the road should we uh, encounter those bad guys. So we can now produce the plastic aqua armor. Yep, so the med kits, um, take those down. We don't need to really manufacture those anymore. We need to put as many guys on our plastic aqua armor as possible. So um, it's going to require some aqua plastics. We've got enough. We don't really have enough technicians. I do want to get enough for everybody to fill a Triton though. That's like 14 and yeah, 51 days. Um, and we will build them at a rate of, gosh, what is that, every three days or something? It's not very fast. Um, yeah, and we can't really get any new technicians, at least for a few more, uh, at least a couple weeks, actually, until the uh, new living quarters come on board. So we're just going to be building slow, uh, but we got to do it. So that's what we'll do. We'll build with what we have right now. We need to plus up this base's um, facilities to be able to handle... A decent load of technicians as well as uh, scientists. So we'll get that cranking and let's fast forward through our turns. Okay, we've got some arriving replacements and scientists. Let's get those dudes to work right away. Add the extra available 12 scientists. That gives us 72. Um, and get the extra technicians, one guy on there. And yeah, you know what, let's just cancel the med kit project entirely and add the last guy. Alright, brought it down to 41 days, which is better than 51, but yeah, we really need uh, need more capacity to hold the technicians. Okay, moving right along here, let's fast forward 5th of March and we get our first alien contact submarine, a medium sub airborne okay mediums are bigger than what we've seen before all right and he's coming from the mediterranean um our barracuda probably can't shoot it down uh, so let's take a look at our triton and we're probably just gonna have to go after it and do an intercept hope that it lands so we've got 14, uh, space for 14. Let's go ahead and load some extra troops on board. 
make sure we've got enough equipment. What do we got? Uh, 11 Sonic Pistols. We picked up another. Make that 12. Um, pistol Power Clips. Yeah, we'll just do one each there, I think. Um, thermal Tasers. Uh, gas Cannon. We don't need three. We can take that down a bit. Um, phosphorus Rounds. Yeah, don't need the Hydrojet. Yeah, let's level off what we're going to take for the gas cannons. Uh, drop a couple armor piercing rounds. Uh, just plus up the phosphorus. And yeah, okay. We'll take the Triton out and um, see what we can see if we uh, try to track this sub down. Alright, Triton 1. Target 8. Enemy sub 6. And he's probably going to go out of our sonar range. There he did. Um, go towards his last known location and often when you get there your sonar on the craft will pick him up but let's take a look at the graphs really quick see what's going on in the sea zones so yeah we've got the Antarctic there's stuff going on down there South China Sea uh, South Atlantic okay yeah South Pacific Fiji um, Hmm. Yeah. That was okay. So then, it's um pretty tricky. Okay. Yeah. There's that spike of the the orange there. That's uh, a negative score from last month. And that would have been our Indian Ocean um, mission, our first terror mission at the beginning of the month. Uh. Okay. Yep. So, and we've got the beginning of this month, the, the blue there, South Pacific, the Fiji Terror Mission. Alright, so we are continuing to come in, looking for the last, okay, still looking for the sub. Okay, there, we just spotted him again. Oh, he's going north now, while we're going south. We will still target him, turn around. He's faster than a Triton. Ah, and he landed, which is what we were looking to see. So he landed and our Triton can come up on him. It's daytime, which means our mission will actually be in the day. It's good, we don't need flares. And here's our troops. We will um, we'll go ahead and load them up off screen. And here we are. Right with turn one, we've given everybody uh, distributed out the thermal tasers, the, the uh, chemical flares. We didn't really distribute because we didn't need them. And we'll have our uh, Maria take a look outside the sub. And she sees this terrain. Looks like, um, okay. Looks like we might be seeing terrain of a, um, maybe a sunken ship. Looks like sunken ship decking. And, <laughs> anyway, right there. Okay. A uh, aquatoid with a sonic cannon. Um, okay, so we need to take care of him and Maria move out of his sight. Um, okay, who do we got? Uh, Kazuma, Kazuma, Yagami, Kazuma, why don't you take a shot at this dude? Aim shot and okay, let's try snapshot. Nice work with a snapshot. Excellent. Okay, yeah, I like to see them and one shot them. That's really great. Okay, um, I still do need to take a little more look around, but let's get Edward out. Edward is one of the potential new recruits. Okay, so we're at the edge of the map over here, the west edge, if you will, um, and it extends down, and there's more structure over here. Okay, and more structure. Looks like we might be at the top edge of the map over there, so that's good. So we're kind of in the corner, which is not a bad thing. Just check around behind the sub, just clear it. Okay, good. And wait at the, the nose of the sub there. And uh, let's see here, Meridian, Maria. Yeah, just go ahead and go back in the sub really quick. Um, let's keep uh, cover for the first turn. Okay, didn't hear anything or see anything. That's good. 
And Edward, let's let you take a look out a bit more. Okay, let's um, let's get some more folks open. Okay, doors open. Didn't see anything. Jonathan, taking a look some more. Spotting anything? No. Okay, good. That looks clear. Okay. And so yeah, this um, yeah, this terrain is kind of a little less than optimal. So you got these uh, second-story platforms that are kind of look like I don't know ship parts and spots for enemies to hide and snipe you like this is a ship deck over here with the hole um, half sunk at an angle so these will block lines of sight and lines of fire um, yeah these maps are pretty interesting but there's a lot of cover for the enemies to hide in and um, unfortunately the angle that the cover is um, gives us a lot of uh, doesn't let us see into those structures often before we have to come out. We're coming at them from the backside, more or less. So I wanted to mention to you guys that um, Maria is is one of our uh, new troops, and we're going to look to try to get her some some experience and our other rookies on this uh, mission. And when they become able seamen, we promote them and give them a name. Now. We take the names from those who have requested, uh, and if you would like to become a member of our XCOM team, I invite you to leave a comment in the comment section below. Um, I love getting the comments from people, even if it's just, hey, please sign me up, or I'll be the next fresh meet, or you didn't do it right, click the mouse the other way, or whatever. I love the comments, I love the feedback. Uh, it's it's one of the coolest things about doing the... the uh, the let's play uh, the game is fun to play but the interaction with the with the subscribers is is even better so please feel free to comment if you'd like to join uh, go ahead and put, leave a, a comment in the in the uh, comment box below and um, we will bring you on board I do have a list of a uh, roster of those who've signed up um, once I've gotten through that list I'll be just adding regular subscribers so feel free to join that uh, elite bunch of subscribers to my channel. But uh, I want to thank you for watching this episode. This episode of Rockin' the Oldies, a retro Let's Play with Ivan Dogovich, has been brought to you by Dogcraft.net, the CyberDog Network, and viewers like you. Today's viewer is Thomas Jackson. Thank you guys so much for walking, watching. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. This is Ivan Dogovich. Cheers!